Hi, my name is Matt Duff. I'm an application engineer here at Analog Devices, and we're continuing our series on stability. And in this video, we're going to talk about how parasitic capacitance can affect your stability, especially when using a non-inverting configuration. So I've drawn an example circuit up here, and it's a, just a gain of two non-inverting configuration. I've used two 10 kilo ohm resistors. And I'm modeling some parasitic capacitance as 10 picofarads. So this would be a combination of both capacitance of the op amp itself. So let's say you were using a JFET or some op amp that had a little bit higher input capacitance. And also whatever capacitance that you have of your trace. So if you had a longer trace, of course, you longer, fatter trace, of course, you'd have more parasitic capacitance. So what's happening here? Well, what we want to do is, just like we've talked about in all the videos, is we want to keep our loop gain, this, this A beta, so we want to make sure that our graph ends up so we don't have a 40 dB per decade slope when we cross the 0 dB line. So how do we figure out that? So what we end up having is we have a beta that's formed, so the feedback that's formed by these three components here, and this is a resistor divider with capacitance on it, and if you remember correctly, the output impedance, uh, so to calculate the cutoff, so you're going to get a, a uh, roll off just like an RC filter, except that instead of being a gain of 1 here at DC, you're going to have whatever the gain of the uh, resistor divider is. And if you remember from your circuits, uh, the cutoff is formed by the parallel combination of these two resistors with this capacitance. And so for the values that I've picked here, it ends up being, I think, 3.2 uh, megahertz, if I remember correctly. Um, <clears throat> and so that is this pole. And so now if we transfer this beta and we lay it on top of or combine it with our transfer function from our op amp, we'll end up getting a loop gain, something like this, where we have the pole that's formed by our op amp that's up here, and we have the pole formed by our RC circuit here. Now there's a few things we can we can learn here. So one is that if I were to use a slower op amp, so say I had a, a op amp whose open loop gain plot came out you know, down over here, then this parasitic capacitance wouldn't really matter that much because it would end up that this pole would end up below our 0 dB line. I'd have a nice 20 dB through our 0 dB line and I'd be okay. So that's kind of rule number one is that this parasitic capacitance is more of a problem with high speed op amps than it is with lower speed ones be because of that uh, effect. Another thing we can learn here is that if, if I were to use lower value resistors, then this would be less of an issue. So if instead of using 10 kilo ohm resistors, I had used 1 kilo ohm resistors or even smaller resistors, then I would have pushed my pole out in frequency. Again, it would be below my 0 dB line, and again, I would be okay. So that's why generally when you read high-speed op-amp data sheets, they always recommend, hey, you know, why don't you use low-value resistors, don't use high-value resistors. And that's why uh, you can often make a, a part stable that is unstable by lowering the resistor values. A third thing to notice here is that the, uh, the beta factor, the, the resistor divider part of the beta factor, actually ends up pushing our A beta section, our graph down. So if instead of, you know, I've got a gain of two circuit, which ends up the, the beta is the inverse of the gain, so I end up only having a beta of one half. But let's say I did a gain of 100, so my beta was one one hundredth. That would end up pushing this graph down, and again, I might be stable. So those are all little tricks you can do to try to make, your, make sure that your part stays stable. Another thing that folks often do is they'll push a, they'll put a capacitance across the resistor that's in the in the feedback, and what that does is you end up forming a circuit that looks like this for your beta term. And if you think about this kind of quickly, you have your resistor divider that sets your gain at your low frequencies. You have a capacitive divider that sets your gain at your high frequencies, and then there's some sort of transition region in between that depends on, on kind of the ratios you've got here. So let's say we, we have something like this. So similar to when we talked about uh, driving per, uh, capacitance loads in our last video, 
you can end up having a graph that looks something like this, where again you maintain your stability. So adding this extra capacitance in the feedback path is often a great trick to solve your uh, parasitic capacitance problem. So this is why parasitic capacitance on the inverting terminal uh, is a big deal, especially for non-inverting configurations. For inverting configurations, typically it's less, less of an issue.